al frente de la manifestación iba Carlos Sastre, un asesino que le puso una bomba en el pecho al empresario José María Bultó. Eso por la mañana, por la tarde, estaba un secuestrador y terrorista como Arnaldo Tegui, entrevistado en TV3. Y por la noche, ¿qué pasa? ¿Qué arde Barcelona? Es que no puede ocurrir otra cosa. Pero nosotros, ¿a quién hemos matado? ¿A quién hemos secuestrado? ¿Cuándo hemos vulnerado el orden constitucional para que se haga un boicot como el que se nos hace? Así que hoy os digo otra vez, adelante españoles de Granada, sin miedo a nada ni a nadie, por España, todo por España, España siempre, España lo primero, ¡viva España! Hello, replacement, white genocide and reconquista are catchwords for failure and surrender. You've just watched a seven and a half thousand strong Vox rally in Grenada, Spain, Santiago Abascal, he's the speaker, he's a real tough looking guy, a real la a ladies man, a real leader. The people love him. But what's very uh, noticeable and also encouraging is when you look at the crowd, the amount of young people there, and also the amount of young, attractive females, sadly missing from British nationalism since I can remember. And we all know why, but that's another video in itself. Now, you don't see the Vox Party planning for their minority status and look for some new homeland, do you? No, they're fighting for Spain now, as we should be, instead of dwelling on this nonsense, replacement, white genocide, reconquista Nick Griffin style, where we all relocate to Eastern Europe and then in a hundred years' time come back and free the West from Islamic slavery, Christ. You've got some nerve trying to uh, sell that to the white nationalist community, haven't you? But it's, it's, it's your cop house. It's a way of saving face because you handed the BMP over to the enemy and you haven't got the decency now and do the right thing and get back in and let's start again and take the fight back to the enemy. You see, the Brexit party, they've lit the touch paper and we'll finish the job. British nationalism, not the bogus British nationalism we see springing up now. New parties with new leaders. We know who they are. We know who they work for. They're a creation of hope, not hate. They're not even worth mentioning. So we need to stop dwelling on this nonsense, defeatist rubbish, replacement white genocide, reconquista. Let me just put this to you. If you were to ask the average man and woman in the streets, what's more important to you now as I speak? The local bus service being terminated or your local post office being closed or white people in Britain may be a minority in 40 years time. Well, exactly. Why are we pushing this nonsense? Well, it's the enemy and it's also unscrupulous, deceitful people like Nick Griffin pushing it because it saves face. It's his way out. It's his cop out because he'd been a failure and he's now surrendered. It looks like he only join the BMP to get elected to the European Parliament to secure his pension, pennies and pounds, because that's how it looks. It looks like you've just sold out British nationalism for gluttony and self. That's how it looks, Nick, right? But it doesn't have to be that way for any of us. We must get back in there. We must continue the fight. I don't know how long it's going to take for British nationalism to get back up on its feet and up and running, but it will happen. It has to. The bogus parties will just, they're not real, you see, so keeping the momentum going is going to be difficult. And that's a flaw in it that maybe they didn't realise or see, I don't know. But anyway, like I say, replacement, white genocide, reconquista, Nick Griffin style. The catchwords for failure and surrender. Just look at that Vox rally. Look at the amount of young people especially young, attractive females. We can emulate that. We can do it. Let the Brexit party light the judge paper and we'll finish the job. Okay, thank you.